Hello guys, welcome to What the Football again. It's Chetanya joining me as always and we're going to talk about everything to do with the World Cup so far. Dude, it was a um, quite a weekend. We had some interesting results going on. Ghana, Germany and Portugal, USA, that Group G most importantly, has now all become the more group of death, I'd say. Yeah, we were all surprised and we were all uh, kind of disappointed that uh, we might not get the weekend that we planned for, but mm -hmm. the results kind of changed the mood a lot. Worth staying up till 3.30 in the morning. Worth staying up, that, definitely. That Even the Argentina-Iran game is probably oh, yeah. really, really good Messi, show. that guy Again. is just coming through when At you need end, him yep. and Ronaldo is jealous. Yep. <laughs> For sure. Um, Germany didn't um, convincingly beat Ghana like everyone thought. Where were they weak? I think it has to do with the entire setup and the fact that, that this German team is clicking. They're not that, that Portugal Germany mm -hmm. match was again a flash in the pan. You mm -hmm. will not see that match ever happen again with that way. But this German team is, will, will start clicking. Just a question of if rather than when. So we'll just have to wait and see. But I think they were pretty solid in defense with Hummels also getting a header. Any chance we'll see closer getting a, getting a start after his ah. wonder performance? Because this is they are pretty much through. Considering he scores when he comes comes off the bench, doesn't think he needs a start. He's 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 like the impacts up for the German uh, team. Uh, speaking of which, not an impact sub, but someone who was very much on the pitch the whole time for the United States was Jones, and what a strike from Aye. him. Just to round off a very, very, very lively performance from Jones, and again, the keeper was left with nowhere to go. Just, he was just standing just there. past him. And the audio, the audio dipped in the whole stadium, <laughs> and all you heard is... You, you, could, you could hear him put his laces through the ball. Beautiful. But who would you say, because Tim Howard also had a, had a pretty good time behind, behind, between the sticks. Who would you say was the man of the match between those two? I think Team USA was the man of the match in this because, nice. because with Jürgen Klinsmann and his well-drilled 11, I think they put on a really, really tough show for Portugal. And lucky for them, they got the last hand goal. They did. Otherwise, things could have been further worse for them. Uh, USA will feel pretty cheated out by that. Again, I think a point for them is a bonus from this game, considering mm -hmm. they weren't coming into this game with any hope of any point. So anything they got from the Portugal game just adds more fire to this group and makes it almost as complicated as the group of death. Indeed, it could be too little too late for Portugal, that we'll find out. But let's take a look at first who is in and who is out. That's been confirmed so far. Right there. As you can see, Chile, Colombia, Costa Rica, France, Argentina, Belgium and Germany I've added in there because they are pretty much through. Um, Spain, that's the last we will see of Spain. That is quite sad. That's why I'm wearing the jersey in because memory. I might as well get one more run out of it. <clears throat> England, disappointing as always. The rest, you could probably expect. Perhaps not Bosnia. Well. Uh Again, the groups were scattered such that a lot of uh, underdogs and a lot of very not well-known national teams were brought together. So whoever knocked out got knocked out because mm -hmm. they didn't play well at the end of the day. We have to also understand that. To say. But yeah, with Jeko and Begovic and a lot of and Miralim Pjanic in the Bosnian team, we really did not expect them to be on the right side or the wrong side yep. of the table <laughs> as it stands. But yeah, good going for Netherlands and Chile who will have a shootout to see who faces Brazil. Yes, indeed. That is going to be an interesting game as well. But this will be Spain's last game this year in the World Cup. Four years, we won't see them now in their national colours, playing for the biggest tournament on the planet. They will be playing Australia, but it's a purely academic game. Um, let's take a look at the Spain sheet, because these are the last people we will expect to see this World Cup. I think the lineup's also been changed with keeping in mind the fact that this is, as you said, a very academical affair mm -hmm. the game has to go through regardless of any consequences so I think he's made the right changes we sent the Del Bosque with the players who did not feature in the World Cup mm -hmm. getting that last shot of having that the Brazilian Antares taste before they packed their bags to I would have again. I would have still started Xavi just because it is the last game there's nothing they can do about it Koke has a, a long future ahead of him he's a bright young player it's a shame. I hope he comes on as a sub at least later. He deserves it. I think every one of these Spain veterans will, I think, get a taste of the match as it stands. Because again, Australia and Spain have nothing to play for. This game could well be a thrilling goal scorer or could just be a dull, dull draw. We Indeed. Just have to know. Well, we have actually got uh, Nick Hill and Siddharth finally joining us on Google Hangout. Hello, guys. We were just talking about Nick Hill. We were just talking about Spain and how it's their last game. Uh, who are you going to miss the most from this uh, Spain squad and like the guys who are leaving the older players? Who are you going to miss the most? Um, I honestly think Xavi is going to be the guy. Uh, 
Right, Sorry, the audio is a bit unclear there. Javi, he called it. Yeah. Um, me too, actually. I think it's between Javi, Javi Alonso. A lot of players who've defined Iniesta. A lot of players mm -hmm. who've defined that Tiki Taka Actually, generation. Iniesta. Sorry, it is Iniesta very <laughs> much for me. How you know, he just doesn't seem like he's on his last legs. That's why I didn't even think about him. Guys, on Twitter, we would love to know who you think uh, or who you will miss the most out of the Spain team. Uh, there are a lot of crazy awesome players that we're not going to see next time at the World Cup. So do let us know on Twitter at India Post Live. Use the hashtag WTFootball and send your thoughts in so that we can get chatting about all of that. Right then, on to a little bit of news and stuff. Um, Alex Song has been banned for three games for his... Well, he should, yeah, he should consider himself lucky considering he what distinguished martial artists do with their feet. He actually <laughs> did, did with his hands, so... He should consider himself lucky, but yeah, that calls for it and FIFA has actually gone into the whole retrospective challenge mode and actually done a good thing by doing this at the World Cup. Prevents a lot of players from acting with that moment of madness on the pitch like he did. Well, it's true. I mean, these guys are not going to be, their game is also academic. They're also out this game. These two games will now carry over till 2018. Do we expect to see Alex Song even make it that far? I hope for, Cam I hope for Cameron's sake it does, but... Again, he'll be missing the game uh, against Brazil tonight. Mm -hmm. So, let's see how big of an impact his absence or his presence makes to the game. Right then. Um, we've also got a, a chance for you guys to win a trip down to Brazil. If you want to catch these guys uh, play their last games, well, you're probably not going to make it in time, but you can make it down there nonetheless to check it out. You have to log on to India Post Live and uh, let us know your answers on the site, indiapostlive.com. Right then, um, we've also got some other news where Diego Maradona has not just given the hand of God, but the finger of God now oh as God. well. <laughs> yes, the finger of God. I can't give you the motion that he did. You can fill that in yourself, I'm sure you know. But basically, uh, the Argentinian football president, uh, Julio Grondonas, uh, called him a jinx. And as soon as he left during the match that day, Messi in fact scored. So he came on live TV and... Uh, responded in his own <laughs> Maradona-like way. Typical Diego fashion. Typical Diego. Um, in other news, Kaka, another Brazilian who we won't see this year, is probably on his way to join David Villa and the likes in the United States, not for the same team, but for Orlando, Orlando. who are also standing at, starting an ambitious project. Again, the United States is getting the best out of the players in their twilight. And Indeed. making the most of their league, which has started with David Beckham and now Man City. So a lot of players joining that US bandwagon, which is always good for the sport because you might see... If this is the USA side that performs in the 2014 World Cup, you might see a better USA side in Russia and in Qatar to follow. Yeah, why not? They're going to be and needed. Speaking of news, well, Louis Van Hal and Luis Felipe Scolari have not met yet, might meet, might face each other in the World Cup. That has not stopped them from getting into a war of words already. Yes, indeed. Well, according to FIFA's fixtures, uh, Felipe Scolari gets to know who faces their uh, his Brazilian team in the round of 16s even before Netherlands even before they've kicked the ball. And and Van Hal is is just not happy about He's not that happy at all. At all. In fact, he's come out openly and criticized getting in, FIFA. Getting in good Manchester United and Sir Alex Ferguson mold, mm -hmm. he has slammed the FIFA fixtures, the saying it's not a good thing of us. Of course, it's not fair play. We're, we're going to focus on a vic mm. victory against Chile, but it's unfair for our opponents to know who they've drawn out already. Uh, let's, ask, let's ask Siddharth here on uh, Hangout what he thinks of that. Um, these, are FIFA playing tricks or is this just coincidence? Do you think there's something shady going on over there? Uh, um, uh, no, I, I think it's just tricks. It's just mind games going around there. There's nothing uh, real shady about it. But also, uh, also going to Nikhil with this with this question, Luis Felipe Scolari branded someone of Louis Van Hal's uh, well gravity to call him irresponsible, and what he says is nonsense. Do you think they are? Do you think it'll be this will uh, come down to a war of punches when these teams, if they do manage to face each face each other, do we expect fireworks there? I I do actually expect to just have a war word. It, it all boils down to kind of a Chelsea versus Manchester United sort of feud <laughs> that never seems to stop. It doesn't matter whether it's clubs, whether it's people who used to be at the club, whether it's the janitors of the club. There just <laughs> to be something about people wanting to get into this war words. 
Oh, both of them are, of course, from their respective nations, so that brings up the pride even more so. Um, some more words have been going up and down and thrown at each other, with, this time with uh, Roy Hodgson and Steven Gerrard, who in a press conference uh, were asked about some statements made by Harry Redknapp about when he was in charge of Tottenham and how, how some England players apparently didn't want to be uh, selected for the uh, national games because it was too aggro, as they said, or that they just didn't want the pressure. Uh, this, of course, led to a really bad reaction from Gerard and um, Hodgson, obviously. Gerard actually asked um, Redknapp to name and shame those players, and I totally agree. Again, this is, this is very, very, well, not the best news of England, considering they've been knocked out in the first eight days of the World Cup. And when you get news of players who are not willing to be selected, who are not happy to be selected, just, just puts into perspective, saying, give the chances to players who actually want to play for your country, yeah. rather than players based on merit who... The, this is why Didier Deschamps' move comes in very well by not picking Nazri mm -hmm. because, he's, because he's not a good yeah, team, yeah. He's team a name and, and named and shamed in public. This yeah. guy doesn't pass the ball, he's not a team player, he's out the World Cup. I think England needs zone. an entire rejig like that mm -hmm. with terms of their setup, in terms of their transparency with players working or not because clearly this is not working. This yeah. is the third World yeah. Cup they failed to make Spain a mark Spain also had a little bit of a training ground bust up with Cesc Fabregas as well, um, having some words, handing his... He was apparently, apparently supposed to start wearing the purple jersey, the clips are online. Uh, and something went down and he wasn't performing well or whatever, so he has been taken out by Del Bosque and uh, that's why Alonso actually gets the start today. Uh, so a lot of things going on for these teams under the weather. But back to the Holland game, because that is the other academic game tonight, but it's going to be a good one nonetheless because it's versus Chile, who are, of course, the other underdog team who are killing it. Um, the winner of this will not face Brazil, so that's something, or potentially, depending on how it uh, turns out so they'll be do you think they'll be fielding their best teams out there or they yeah, can I think for yeah a draw? I think the stakes are very high and I think a blessing in disguise for Louis van Hal is also the fact that Robin van Persie is suspended mm -hmm. off this game so Save that kind that, of yeah that yeah. kind of the competition itself saves him from the much more crucial part of the tournament mm -hmm. as for Chile again they've they've not been held to any prisoners they've been going Hell for leather for everything that comes that way. So expect Chile to perform the same way they did and they'll probably get a good result against Netherlands. Well, I really hope we see another good game as well. That team is certainly awesome. Uh, Siddharth, can you hear me, buddy? Hear you. Perfect. Um, so um, Chet Chetanya was saying that um, they are going to go all out for this. Will, will the managers be expecting to hold back anyone else? Um, we, the starting lineups are out. We, we wanted to get them up here for you, but we can't at the moment. But oh, I already uh, have the starting lineup. I don't think so. Uh, Netherlands have gone with full force. They have uh, Robin, Schneider, De Jong. Everyone is in the lineup, so they're not holding back anything. Mm -hmm. They're going all out, all guns blazing. Nor is Chile. They have Vargas and Alexis Sanchez, Silva and Ilsa are playing there, so the, both the managers are going with full force, so I don't think so, they're holding back anything. Where are you going to find the, where, what are going to be the clashes of the match between the two teams and let's say player to player ma uh, clashes for you? Sorry? Where, where are the biggest player clashes for you between Netherlands and Chile, like one from each team? Who's going to be watching the other? Who's going to be planning for the other? Anything I think notable? they're going to be, Sanchez is on fire. This World Cup, I think Sanchez has been brilliant for Chile. And uh, the defender, the Iron Robben, has been brilliant. So both these players are brilliant for each team. So I think they will be on fire. Especially Iron Robben, he's been like brilliant this, this World Cup. He's yeah. not disappointed me at all. He's been for on the a run, change. he's been good with the ball. So yeah. Yeah, com completely. Um, so that's how Netherlands Chile is going to be interesting, guys. Uh, predictions for that. Let's start with Nick Hill. Um, I'm actually going to go with Chile to win. Uh, home home factor soil, mm -hmm. and I honestly think that the two key players for either team are going to be De Jong and uh, De Jong is going to be outclassed by Vidal. Happy days. That is so a, that is an interesting clash up in the midfield. That's going to go down. And Vidal is not in the lineup today, so I don't think so. Uh, say again. Vidal's not. He's starting. not in the he's lineup today. Oh, today. He's not starting today. That's why we he, got he here. He got injured. There was an injury scare, so I think so. 
he's not been uh, he's starting mm. on the bench well wise to wise to save him as one of their key players for sure right then uh, right. we've got a what the fact that is to do with the missing robin van persie go for it chatanya again a man who would have who's been along with iron robin as he pointed out a very very important part of this dutch team's campaign and he's well he was already the highest all time goal scorer for the orange with that hat trick against hungary that was an 8-1 score line where he scored three goals two for robin two making him the all time record dutch scorer and well you got to give this man some credit con considering the same jersey has been worn by someone like juan cruyff and marco van basten mm -hmm. dennis bergkamp so to him to be at the top of the ladder says more than enough about this man have you seen the photo uh, online of that same the same photo with the superman cape on hence the it's, super van persie uh, it's awesome right then uh moving on to our two matches coming up tonight uh, that is going to be group a so let's take a look at how group a is looking after two rounds of games Right there, it's all to play for and nothing to lose except for um, Cameroon who have literally nothing to lose because they are very much out. However, if Brazil do lose to Cameroon and Mexico and Croatia is a high scoring draw, Brazil will find themselves on the short end of the stick and out of the World Cup. So that is an interesting thing. Do you see that happening in this Mexico-Croatia game? Do you see a high scoring game happening there? I do see the well one one part of it could be very very realistically true the fact that the Mexico Croatia game does end up in a high scoring game a draw not so certain but then a high scoring game it will be because Mexico as we've seen a hot on form mm -hmm. and Croatia in the past game or two have shown that they're capable they of giving every team a plate. fight so yeah it could be a high high scoring game even be a draw I don't think Brazil will slip up in front of well, home support. Well, I mean, right here, the, the goal difference right now is not significant. So it, it very much could happen. It doesn't have to be that high scoring a, a game as well. Well, so, what, could be, what so, could be killer for Brazil is Mexico actually so win the high scoring if, game against if Croatia. Cro if Croatia and Mexico finishes in, let's say, a, a two-all draw and Cameroon beat Brazil straight up 1-0. They're go they lose on they lose on goal difference. They lose on goal difference, but one so, one possibility, a realistic one, could be if Mexico beat Croatia and Brazil scrape past a one nil win, Brazil come second. Yes, indeed. And, then, and that could also turn that, that, that then then the Van Gaal is again going to be that, well. At least that wouldn't be planned. That unless yeah. it is. Unless it Who is. Who knows? Never know Louis These are the so strategies, <laughs> right? Um, let's take a look at the Brazil team that is not actually going to be expected to play. This is actually what we've done because there's the debate going on between Fred and Joe and who should start and all. But I've actually put my own little thing out here and what I think they should go with, and I don't know why they don't do this. Why is Scolari so fixated on his ways? Because I think it's more like a winning combination and the fact that he's won most of his trophies and his honours with the Brazilian national team. Mm -hmm. Obviously knows the team inside out, has a very, very good rapport with the players. So even if he de decides to put someone on the bench for extended periods, mm -hmm. they know where he's coming from. Because with the, with the rapport you have with the entire team, you, you assert yourself as a coach. And well, I, Villian might actually be a good pick mm -hmm. against this Cameroon team because they're not really up to pace with... Mm -hmm the pace that Bernard and Villian will offer on the wing. So, if he does that... I mean, I just find with Neymar in the World Cup and the pressure that's on him, his mind is on scoring right his now. His mind is and, on and scoring. And you we're putting him in a, in a position where he has to pr provide as well, which he's, he's good at also, but why not literally unleash the, unleash the beast, you know? So, um, that's, yeah, Neymar in the set, at the focal point of the attack could result in a lot of goals that is there. And that is exactly what Brazil need throughout the World Cup. This will also be uh, Cameroon's swan song. Nick Hill, uh, have we got you there? Nikhil, um, for Cameroon, we'll be seeing, except for Alex Song, um, it'll be most of their stars and veterans, I guess, having their last run out there. Um, are they going to take it easy, or are we going to see one for pride? Are they, they going to get stuck in, do you think? Um, I see Cameroon are going to play, come there to play. Um, they've come here to fight, in all honesty. I'm kind of trying to figure out who's going to win. Be Alex Song, Pepe, Benoit, eh, Asu Benoit, Koto. If they got into a fight, who would actually come out alive? Well, well, Nigel, Nigel De Jong's going to play tonight. Let's say, let's may see if he kicks someone. We'll add him to the list as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Um, so I was, I was just saying, um, is, uh, is Samuel Leto going to cause this team any troubles? No, no. I, I don't believe Leto is capable of causing any team's trouble. You're, you're, uh, you're very much firmly in belief of the uh, old man comments. 
No, if there was a wheelchair ramp, then yes, maybe he could. But I don't, I don't see him causing anybody trouble. Right maybe. then, um, Sadat, let's get let's get a question yeah. in to you there. Uh, Braz Brazil squad would between Fred and Joe, who would you pick? Uh, Fred, definitely. Is, is that he's, he's good in the air? He is, knows he takes up good uh, like positions up front. So I think I'll go for Fred. Well, let me give you another Instead. option. If you had the option to use neither and go with perhaps let's say the lineup that you, uh, we we selected tonight, would you do that? If you were in Scolari's shoes, if you were in Scolari's shoes, would you uh, go without them and just put Neymar up front instead? No, I would uh, prefer Neymar uh, wide out on the wing than putting him in the centre. I would definitely put a striker. That's outright striker. That'll be Fred. Mm -hmm. For me, it's Fred. Fred is the call. So then, guys, predictions. Let's get it from you, Sadat. Um, I'll go for uh, like three 0 to Brazil. Three 0 to Brazil. Nikhil, from you, predictions. Yeah, I'm, I'm also probably going to go somewhere a hockey score with Brazil winning. Brazil winning. Shaitanya, who, else, who else should we look out for? Comfortable 2 nil, And I think Chupa Mutong has been due a goal all this while. Mm -hmm. He's been doing all the running around. I think he's due a goal. goal. And as right as Nikhil is saying that Samuel Aitu cannot trouble teams anymore. He's not that potent self. Mm -hmm. I think he's still due a goal in this World Cup at least. Just to sign off because he, he's also on his last legs for this tournament. So, so let's hope it all wins. I'm going for a 3-1 for Eto to score a goal and kind of round off his international career. Alrighty then. Well, I'm just for the sake of playing devil's advocate and also not to offend any of the Brazilian fans, I'm just going to say Cameroon are going to be party spoilers and they're going to win 1-0. Just, just for the sake of making things more interesting. This has been a really interesting World Cup so far. Nothing is out of the question. Right then, um, next match, Croatia versus Mexico, the one that will really make the impact on where's, what's going down there. It's going to be the clash of actually Mandzukic is back for uh, Croatia and Ochoa is of course the man in form from Mexico. Whose shoes would you rather be in with the, all this pressure? I'd like to be in the spectator shoes actually with a <laughs> beer in my hand and popcorn on the side and watching the game because I think you're right, between those two two pairs of shoes, there's there's going to be a lot of running. There's going to be a lot of important moves that will be made on those feet. Mm -hmm. So, if you ask me and if I had to answer, I'd say Ochoa shoes because that guy is, that, that guy's got, got what you need to succeed. To say? stop a team like, like Brazil, Brazil, which comes at you from all angles and fronts, you really need to have a steady head and a calm, calm, very, very calm temperament throughout yeah. chaos. Yeah. There was absolute chaos in yeah, the yeah. Mexican defense and he they was the one who was place. bestowing calm everywhere. So I think I'd like to be in Ochoa's Nikes or Ochoa's Ochoa's whatever. Shoes. I guess he only has to worry about one or two players rather than the entire team this time around. Uh, I'm going to put the same question to you, Nikhil. Would you rather be in uh, Mandzukic or Ochoa's shoes with the pressure on tonight? If if he's in Ochoa's shoes, then I'd like to be in Manzuki's <laughs> <laughs> is, is that only just for the sake of kicking him, perhaps? <laughs> why, would, why would I kick him? Just His head is not the ball. And nor am I Pepe. <laughs> he's, he's just, he's just trying, to, trying to inflict a confrontation, Nikhil. Don't, don't listen to him. Maybe, poking, uh, maybe poking, after the poking, game, poking. instead of jerseys, we'll exchange shoes. <laughs> <laughs> You, you may actually end up exchanging life insurance policies. <laughs> <laughs> True say. True say. That's, that's, that could be what something they would Right. Be. Your prediction then, uh, Nick Hill. Um, it's it's going to actually be a little trick. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's Mexico that really need to sort of uh, um, go out there and hold for a draw mm -hmm. to, to qualify. So the pressure is going to be on Croatia to go for it. And I do believe that this Croatian team has at least a goal in them. Now, it's up to Mexico to see how they're going to counter that. So, yeah, I think it's going to be a tight match. Um, I think Mexico might just sneak by. S sneak by, so call it. What's your score? Win, draw, loss, and score line. I'm going to go with 1-1 one, one draw and Mexico to go through. Mexico to go through 1-1 one, one draw to Siddharth then you also uh, and I just want to make one one more point again uh, I don't think they've got Chicharito starting and this is them is that a statement do you think very much that they're going to play for a draw or are they going to um, just hope to hit on the counter or are they going to actually attack 
Um, I think they're going to surely attack, you know, they'll be looking to attack because they want to get the goal first. If they try Mexico gets the goal first, they'll go back and defend mm -hmm. like they did against Brazil. So they have to go in and try and score the first goal. Happy days. Your prediction, sir, what's it going to be? I think it's going to be very tricky, but I want to go for Croatia because I want to see them go ahead into the 16. It'll be 2-1 to Croatia. Happy days. 2-1 to Croatia. Three, two Your two final Croatia. thoughts and scorelines, sir. I think 3-2 to Croatia. I think they've, they've, they've got a couple of goals in them and I think so do Mexico. So. And who's, who's going to be your man to watch besides the goalkeeper and the striker from the other side? I think again it has to be between Modric and Rakitic mm -hmm. and what kind of a job Rafael Marquez does on the day. He's been brilliant for the Mexicans till now. Let's see how he takes on this Croatian test and I'm expecting Croatia to come out of this as winners and actually cause a kind of a stir up in the group. Hey, that's, that's what I'm also looking for. I I want, to, I want to see that high-scoring 2-2-all two, two draw is what I'm hoping to see as well. But Brazilians will kill me if I'm right tonight. So, But don't worry, I'm usually not. Um, guys, <laughs> it's true. What can I say? To call a spade a spade. Uh, guys, that is the end of our show today. Thanks so much for joining us on Google Hangout. Uh, you guys, for joining us on um, wherever you are in the world, in fact, do let us know what you think on Twitter, at India Post Live. Use the hashtag WTFootball. We want to hear your thoughts, your predictions, your comments, your jokes, whatever you can think of. Also, don't forget to play our prize and win yourself that trip to Brazil. That is still out there, and that's still an opportunity. If you don't take it, I sure as hell will. So log on to IndiaPostLive.com and check that out. Until then, guys, we actually finished on time this time, so please switch over to the match because that's what we're going to do. And we will see you tomorrow night with another episode of What the Football. Thank you so much for joining.